Last week, news broke that Missouri AG Andrew Bailey would be suing New York, filing to the Supreme Court under what's called original jurisdiction, claiming that they're interfering in the election by going after Donald Trump in the way that they are. We now have an update from last night. Attorney General Andrew Bailey has announced he will be suing Joe Biden's corrupt Department of Justice for stonewalling his demand for transparency and accountability into the illicit prosecutions of President Trump. He has a thread here that I will get for you in just a minute, but this is absolutely amazing news. And I applaud Missouri's AG Andrew Bailey. I keep saying, where are the state level guys to file these claims, to file charges, to investigate? Now, one thing many people have said to me is, Tim, we do not want tit for tat. Is that really how we want to govern? We don't want to do that. Matt Gates said it. We had him on Timcast IRL and I said, where is this? Where is this happening? Because is that what, really what we want? We want state level guys to be just filing. No, 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 no. We want accountability. We want justice. And that's what AG Andrew Bailey is working towards. This is not, these are not lawsuits that are seeking to target Joe Biden over Burisma or other political dealings. They're specifically in reference to the actions being taken against President Donald Trump. I do think it's funny that the media always calls him former President Trump. It's like you, 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 re, you retain the title afterwards. He is a former president, but we call him President Trump. Soon to be, hopefully. But this is Andrew Bailey saying, I want to know what they're doing, these prosecutions. I want communications. I want the evidence. They're stonewalling him. They're blocking him from doing so. Now, some people have said uh, when this news broke last week about the New York lawsuit, they said, so what? The Supreme Court's term is over. Now they're not going to be able to hear it. He should have filed it earlier so they could have pick it, t- taken it up. Well, uh, Andrew Bailey had responded to that. This was filed on the emergency docket. And as it is a lawsuit under originals jurisdiction, state v. state, the Supreme Court will likely pick this up relatively soon. So this could be huge. Now, I do want to get into the corruption of the DOJ and Andrew Bailey's threat about his about his lawsuit. But first, let's briefly go over his lawsuit against New York, which happened. uh, This was news from last week. Just to give you an update of where we're at, and then we'll break down where he's currently going after the DOJ and why. Fox News reports, oh, and they're always doing this. Don't block me from this, Fox News. Let's see if we can get Fox News to respect news. Uh, I'll have to pull up uh, something else. We'll come back to this later, but I mean, you get the the title. Missouri AG, uh, I'll I'll give you the quick gist. Fox News will load the article and then a little while later, delete it and be like, nope, you got to give us your email. Missouri AG sues New York over reprehensible lawfare against Trump poisonous to American democracy. Now you've got a whole bunch of outlets arguing that he can't actually do it. There's problems there as well. We'll see. And in the meantime, we'll pull up a different news source, which can give you uh, uh, the rundown on this. And I'll stop trying to pull up Fox News because they always do this, you know. So we have uh, News Nation, I believe. Looks like News Nation will allow us to actually show you guys the context. Reporting. Here we go. Missouri's attorney general is alleging the state of New York violated the First Amendment rights of Missouri residents. Oh, come on. Stop blocking us. Everybody's always trying to play games of Missouri residents by imposing a gag order on former President Trump during his hush money trial. Andrew Bailey filed a lawsuit Wednesday saying New York's illicit prosecution, gag order and sentencing of Trump undermined the former president's ability to campaign for president. In addition, the lawsuit says that New York's overt meddling sabotages Missourians ability to hear from and cast a fully informed vote for president. 100% right. 100% right. Donald Trump's the front runner. He's in court. They're saying he can't say certain things. He's been gagged. Now, hold on. The people of this country want to know what the front runner has to say about these criminal charges. We want to know what he's thinking, why they're happening. New York, a single state trying to shut him down so no one else can hear. Supreme Court's got to act. Right now, Missouri is a huge problem with New York, Bailey said in a statement. Instead of letting presidential candidates campaign on their own merits, radical progressives in New York are trying to rig the 2024 election by waging a direct attack on a democratic process. Bailey also accused Soros-backed prosecutors of holding Missouri voters hostage in the election. I completely agree. Now, the funny thing is, I wonder how many Democrat voters in Missouri are saying, no, it's, fi- it's fine that we don't get to hear what Trump has to say. Sure. Here's his latest thread. He says, I'm filing suit against Joe Biden's corrupt Department of Justice for stonewalling my demand for transparency and accountability into the illicit prosecutions of President Trump. He says, after evidence came to light, the DOJ is the breeding ground of all the unconstitutional lawfare aimed at President Trump. 
I demanded all communications between the DOJ and Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, New York AG Letitia James, and Fulton County DA Fannie Willis, but they refused to comply. Missourians and all Americans deserve to know to what extent the prosecutions of a prominent presidential candidate are being coordinated by the federal government, which is currently run by President Trump, President Trump's principal political opponent. Biden's DOJ owes it to the American people to produce the documents we have demanded. So we're taking action. He says more on our investigation here. In this post from the AG's website, Today, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey demanded the Biden Department of Justice turn over any communications relating to the investigation uh, or prosecutions of President Trump. Thanks to the evidence that has come to light, my office has reason to believe Biden's corrupt Department of Justice is the headquarters of the illicit prosecutions. In the latest request for documents, Attorney General Bailey noted the investigations and subsequent prosecutions of former President Donald J. Trump. He says former. He shouldn't say that he's President Trump. A period of, I guess, considering Joe Biden's the president and they're running against each other. That's why they're doing it. He says, have been conducted in coordination with the U.S. DOJ. This is demonstrated only in part by the move of the third highest ranking member of the DOJ, Matthew uh, Colangelo, to the Manhattan DA's office in order to prosecute former President Trump in the so-called hush money trial in December 2022. In addition, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg worked alongside New York Attorney General Letitia James in pursuing civil litigation against former President Trump, using that experience as a springboard from which from which to campaign for his current position. During that campaign, Bragg promised if elected, he would go after Trump. Once he won the election, he pledged to personally focus on the high profile probe into President Donald Trump's business practices. Given the timing, Bragg charged Trump only after Trump declared his candidacy for president the transparent weakness of the charges and the effect of the charges having in keeping Trump off the campaign trail. There's substantial reason to suspect the Biden administration has coordinated with Bragg and others to bring prosecutions against Trump in order to protect the rights of all Missouri voters who plan to participate in the 2024 presidential election. The state of Missouri has the right to know to what extent the prosecutions of a prominent presidential candidate are being coordinated by the federal government, which is currently run by President Trump's principal political opponent. The request for documents can be read here. Well, of course, they didn't turn it over right now. Republicans in Congress. Let's uh, let's 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 see if we can get any updates on this one. Actually, Republicans in Congress demanded that Merrick Garland turn over the communications between Biden and Robert Hur, a special prosecutor at the uh, communications where this a transcript has been released. But we want to hear because we're wondering if there's anything said that they didn't transcribe. Biden has classified documents. Same as Trump. Illegal. No charges against Biden. Why? Uh, he's a he's a he's a doddering old man with a bad memory. So he, we wouldn't be able to get him. OK, well, we want we want those communications, right? Well, Merrick Garland refused to turn them over. He was held in contempt, referred for criminal prosecution, and the DOJ is refusing to take action. Steve Bannon, for the same reason, is in jail. So I, I haven't checked the latest on the inherent contempt ruling because it was the weekend. I don't think we have any updates yet as to what's going to happen. But Congress, this is a. Uh, uh, and uh, um, um, this is um, who, who's who's filing this? Oh, man, it's been it's been a, it's been a long weekend. Uh, Anna Paulina Luna filing for inherent contempt. We'll see where we go with it. But this would mean the sergeant at arms of Congress would be. Arresting Merrick Garland. Heck of a way for things to go. The lawsuits have already begun. I was having a conversation with family about this. Actually, you know, usually conversations over the poker table. This past weekend, uh, while I was visiting family, I had to check out the World Series of Poker. Had a great time. Did not play in it, but I did play the 5-10 game in the World Series of Poker Kings Lounge, which was pretty fun. Nice chairs, nice tables, expensive game. One, as I often win at poker, you know it. And I had a good time. I had a good time. Talked to some of the people there. They were familiar with the show. They'd asked me, about, you know, who's going to be president. I said, I didn't know. I don't know what's going to happen. What I can tell you is the lawsuits have begun. Missouri is suing New York for election interference. Will the Supreme Court answer the call? Uh Uh-oh. This is going to get interesting. The Supreme Court's already ruled that Trump has immunity when it comes to official duties, presumptive uh, official duties, constitutional duties, and presumptive immunity as it pertains to uh, um, official acts, no immunity for unofficial acts. They did not answer as to whether or not what Trump did on January 6th was official. Lower courts have to decide first. Missouri suing New York. 
the Supreme Court may now actually intervene and say this case did cite actions Trump took in his official capacity. Can't do that. So their answer may be we hereby decide and that New York is interfering in a federal election. But there's a challenge there, a challenge for all the justices. States are allowed to bring criminal charges against people they think commit crimes. So we have a constitutional crisis on our hands. New York will argue just because you're running for president doesn't mean you can't be prosecuted. Then what? Well, the Supreme Court could say, yes, but you did cite his official duties. So this is out. Maybe. The lawsuits have already started, and that's what matters most. Come November, there will be some kind of election. I think we're going to have lawsuits piling up in the coming months. We are we are less than four months away, ladies and gentlemen. Four more months. The lawsuits will be piling up. We are going to get states suing states. We are going to get Republican legislatures suing their own states, suing their governors. What will happen in Congress? Will the Republican members of Congress, will they be able to actually push back? It's a thin majority, very thin. I don't think so. What happens if, with all these predictions, all the predictions are based on the results coming in clean? Wisconsin. The results come in. The state legislature contests the results, saying, this is done in uh, these counties acted outside of the accordance of our laws. And so we will not we, as, as the constitutional uh, uh, bearers. Constitution says the state legislatures decide how the elections are run. We reject this. The governor says, nope, it's fine. I'm going to certify. The state says, no, you can't. They send they send dual electors. The state legislature sends their electors. The governor sends his electors. The governor says, I'm the one who certifies them. The state legislature says, Constitution says we're in charge. Lawsuits get filed in the Supreme Court. Supreme Court now has to answer. I think it's simple. Supreme Court has to side with the Constitution. Legislature has the final say. It's only recently we decided the governors get to certify anyway. The legislature decides. What happens if the Supreme Court says, not interested? And so when it comes to Congress, they go, which ones do we count? Democrats say, count the Democrat ones. Republicans say, count the Republican ones. And Congress just goes, we're counting none of them. What happens if neither candidate makes it to 270? A contingent election. Delegations then vote for Trump. The lawsuits are beginning. So people ask me, Tim, who's going to be president next year? I don't know. I think there's a strong possibility the states will dispute themselves. These key swing states where you have mixed uh, government, Democrat in some area, Republican in some area, they're going to be fighting each other because they're the key holders this time. Republicans need to stop being whiny babies. That's the problem. Democrats are going to demand. We don't care what the rules are. We are putting these, elect- these, these electors through. and We will arrest anybody who dares challenge us. Republicans will go, OK, Democrats, we're sorry. Hopefully not. But we'll see. Moves are being made. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all then.